audio check one, two, and three. We'll get started. I'm gonna go and take care of my pre-stream requirements first.
all you do is whine and sneeze. I can't figure out what you need. Okay, let's get this thing started. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to Final Fantasy The Stream Edition. Last time, we explored the entirety of the bonus dungeons Earthgift Shrine and Hellfire Chasm. Uh, pausing and saving in between so I didn't have to go through them multiple times in order to fight the bosses along the way. And today we're going to continue that trend by going into and exploring the Life Spring Grotto, the one that is unlocked after you defeat the Kraken and uh, relight the water crystal. Now the issue that I have here is that the two bosses that you fight on the 20th and final floor of this area are apparently the strongest bosses in the game um, on par like I said previously with the war mech in terms of its destructive ability but also with tons and tons more HP so we might be in a little bit of trouble when we get through this whole part here but we'll uh, we'll figure that out as we go here so let's get this whole thing moving and see what we can do now I do have the maps over here and there's, um, it says on there that there's a bunch of different shrines and stuff, but I, I already see the exit, so I'm not sure that that really matters too much. Um, basically there's a boss on the 5th floor, a boss on the 10th floor, and then a choice of two bosses on the 20th floor, and we'll obviously be fighting both of them, except we'll save so that we can fight both of them within one go. Um, there are no items that I particularly care about getting here in the grotto. Um, the only place that there are items I particularly care about getting in the random treasure chests is in Whisperwind Cove, and even then it's not in the chests so much as it is in the shop that you can find in Whisperwind Cove, and also from one of the enemies that you can find on the later floors of Whisperwind Cove. So I'm just going for it. Fuck it. I don't care. Uh, okay. Now this one is a little different because it's a little bit more challenging. There are tiles that flash in and out of existence uh, briefly, and you have to follow them to the exit. And if you uh, fall off, well, then you have some problems. I think you start back at the beginning if you fall off, so we're just going to try to meander our way around, and you can get treasure chests from these rooms as well. So I think there's like ten treasures or something like that on this whole thing. It's too bad that we can't jump, because that would make this map a whole lot easier to meander around and deal with. So that one's here. Uh, I'll bet you that just goes around in a circle. So instead, we'll go to this one. Ah, trying to trick me there. Oh, almost tricked me again. Like here ish, yeah, there we go. Uh, that being said, though, if I do find the exit, I'm just going for it like usual. I'm not gonna bother with the other stuff. Okay, so we got a Genji shield from that chest. I believe that is a straight upgrade, yes, for Norn there. Um, it gives her massive evasion compared to the flame shield, so I'm uh, I am not too concerned with not equipping that. Now, can you equip that as well? No, just just you. So, is it Knight, Ninja, that sort of thing exclusive? Let's look. Warrior, Knight, Ninja. Okay, well, that's a good shield. It's uh, present in other Final Fantasy games, so that's probably why it's such a good shield, because they had to make the throwback items super powerful in order to make them worth your while. But, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll make our way here. Ooh, a bed. Can I rest in it? I wonder who lives here. Not me, obviously. Maybe it's actually Howl's Moving Castle because it's a castle in the sky. I don't know. Maybe this is the Lufinian's prototype or the Flying Fortress, and they were like, well, we could build the place of peace, or we could build the war machine that uh, holds all of our ancient secret technology. Hey, that last one sounds more evil, but uh, hey, we can make it work, right? Uh, actually, I'm just going to fall off, so now I can go back to the beginning and I can start up here instead of all the way back there and trying to get my way out of here. Uh, try and make sure they're not going to trick me here. Ah, there you go. 
they would have, but I managed to not be uh, where they're trying to trick me at the right time. And that's the thing about this, and that's why I'm not really going for treasure chests all that much, is because most of them are just kind of, eh, items. I mean, you can get some good stuff if you get lucky, like the Genji shield there, but yeah, most of it is just other stuff that's not really all that great. I will tell you what, though, if this floor had monsters on it, it would be absolute murder. I would want to kill myself, to be completely honest with you. <laughs> I'd want to jump off like I just did and accidentally made myself go back to the beginning. But, to be fair, we weren't that far into this little maze, so it's okay. With table. So basically, this is probably like Castle Cornelia, except in the air, I guess. So that... I mean, I won't say that that makes sense, because it kind of doesn't, but... Or not where this goes. But let's give it a shot anyway. No, oh, I've already been here. Okay. So we gotta go the other way then, is what you're telling me, game. This one doesn't trick you. Okay. I hope that the blinking is um, showing up on the stream there. I would think it would be, considering it's showing up for me, but. It's not blinking that fast, though, so I think it is probably showing up. Here, right? Yeah. And then we just wander. Um. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, this looks like a dead end, but not quite. I can get off this wild ride right here, though, so that's probably okay. Uh, where do you go? I wonder if you eventually get around to that um, door there. Let's find out. Yeah, by the looks of it. And what is in here? A lunar curtain. Alright, don't really need that, but sure. Right, yeah. No tricks, it goes all the way to the end. And then this one... might lead in the direction I'm hoping it does. Okay, well this is fine. Giant's Tonic, okay. Again, don't really need most of this stuff, but... I mean, I guess it's there, so... Might as well pick it up since it's halfway on my way. So, a white fang and a mind plus, which you can use to increase intelligence, I believe. Yeah, it raises intelligence. I'm gonna give that to Russo because he needs more intelligence for his uh, spells there. Because uh, that's how he's gonna be dealing more damage. And actually, to be honest with you, I just thought about this now. There are items that I could buy from the caravan that were temporarily raising his intelligence in battle. So maybe I should have acquired some of those before coming in here to make some of the harder battles easier, but... Eh, nuts to that. I can't do anything about it now. Not the way that I need to go there. Okay, so straight up this way, and then around, and we'll see where we're going. I don't know if I'm going in the right direction, the wrong direction, or in between, so we're just going to kind of go, aha, here we go, some stairs. Uh, I guess we could check this out a little bit. Well, is it really worth it? No, not really. I'm just going to move on. We got one of the harder floors out of the way there, so that's, that's cool. Hang on, my dog is asking for a pet. I have to oblige because, uh, if I don't, she'll sit here staring at me until I pet her. So, okay. There we go. Alright, now. 
And naturally, these places are going to look a lot like the um, Sunken Shrine because of the nature of this place. But obviously, the enemies here are not quite what we were um, facing over there. So, uh, Let's see here. I don't think you guys are particularly weak to any elements, but if I spam the elements on you with my items, I should be in a little bit better shape. How about this? Nice evasion there. Eventually, Norn's gonna get so much accuracy and evasion that it's just gonna be ridiculous. Like, she'll be at uh, way higher than anybody else in the party because of the gear that she can get. Thanks to her being a ninja, she gets access to much higher level gear that uh, other people in the party simply won't have access to. Excuse me. And for now, it's the same deal as before. I think um, most of the enemies that are more difficult start co actually coming into play. Like, most of the enemies you'll see here are enemies you'll see in all of the different dungeons, uh, bonus dungeons, but you'll start encountering the more difficult enemies, including the ones that I want to find in Whisperwind Cove. Um, here, it's kind of just like the same stuff that you're pretty much always going to be fighting. And most of them, to be honest with you, aren't really that threatening. There is one floor on this map, excuse me, where um, you actually have to fight off a whole bunch of different dragon enemies, and a few of the dragons they introduce there are more difficult than the dragons you fight outside. So probably there we'll find a little bit more trouble, but for now this is, this is just basically cake. Um, actually, let's put you on healing staff duty. Where's the healing staff? There it is. And you can go on Thor's Hammer Duty. Top ourselves off each battle and then also zap things to death. That seems like a pretty fair plan, I think. Until we get to the basement fifth floor and then things start getting a little more interesting. Uh, that's the door I already went. Just keep your eyes peeled for the stairs there, viewers. You can tell me from the future. Oh, you know, actually, I might need... Oh, excuse me, Jesus. I might need some help with this one. So we'll do that. Ha! I don't necessarily know that these level 2 spells will be enough to kill these death elementals, though. I mean, I know my physical attacks will kill them. That's, you know, perfectly obvious, but... I forget how much HP they actually have. I guess they go down to two uh, level two elemental spells, though, so that's nice. Makes things a little easier for me in the long run. Uh, that room has nothing. It probably normally has a chest in it, but not this time. trouble, I guess, that I have with the um, bonus dungeons in this game is that they don't... I mean, the bosses are challenging, of course, but the bosses require the same strategy that you use everywhere else, so is it really challenging or is it just kind of there? You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's the only trouble that I have with the bonus dungeons here is that they don't require you excuse me to play the game any differently than you did otherwise. So, most of the time when I'm playing this game, I'm just like, well, I could do these bonus dungeons, but the game's offered up enough of an adequate level of challenge for me outside of the bonus dungeons without doing them, so why would I do them? <laughs> and that is obviously a big problem that uh, is not something you want your players to be saying when they're referring to your new content that you have for your older game. You don't want them to be like, well, why should I do this when, you know, all of this other stuff. Now, are Death Elementals resistant to, um... 
They do drop Zephyr Cape, so that's nice to have. Um, they're resistant to fire. Okay, I need to keep that in mind because the Thor's Hammer will be my better option for beating them up. Zephyr Capes are basically a better version of the Protect Cloak that I have for Moira. Um, they, it gives you, I think it gives you a little bit more evasion, actually, than the other ones. So it's worth your time to uh, get a hold of one of those if you can. I also like the design of the Genji shield there. It's pretty cool looking. Matches with Norn's design nicely for her armor. She will, however, get a an even better shield as we go here. So, if I can ever find my way off this floor. And maybe if we get lucky, we'll get a Zephyr Cape from one of these guys, but I'm not necessarily... I don't need it. Um, I believe in Whisperwind Cove, if you find a town there, you can purchase Protect Cloaks if you find it on a certain floor. And if you find it on one of the latest floors of the dungeon, you can buy... Excuse me. Elven Cloaks and Zephyr Capes, which are the upgraded versions of the Protect Cloaks, obviously. This way looks promising. Or it could be looping back around to where I started. You never know. do know is that the enemies here are probably not that bad. Okay, so it looped around to the other side of where I started. Okay, so let's go back around this way. It's probably in a different direction. And actually, I might be able to look at where that is if I look at my maps real quick. Let's see here. So, it's this shrine here. Exit is back up, then down and to the right, so it's more towards the southeastern portion of the map, and I'm more in the northeastern portion right now. So let's get back that way. Actually, we're northwestern now, but we will correct that in just a moment. Once I meander my way over there. So it's down further, okay. So it's like down here, and then this way. Aha, there we go. That, oh, here's one of the other more difficult floors. This is the floor that I was talking about with all the dragons. So let's have a chat with, uh, is that Bahamut? Or is that his uh, edgier cousin there? It's his edgier cousin. Dark Bahamut, welcome. Here the bold are tested to see whether they are fit to advance beyond. If you would proceed, you must first face my disciples. You must fight one red dragon, two white dragons, and two holy dragons. Defeat them, and you may pass. Speak to me again if you wish to know how many you've defeated. Okay, cool. So they don't give you any indication of who's what here, but uh, if you fight them, eventually you'll get what you need. Um, do I want to fight all of the dragons? I don't think I do, but let's just give this a shot. I need one red one. Okay, this is not a red dragon. So we'll just... Uh, Mage Staff is super effective, but this thing should go down pretty easily. The only one that you primarily have to keep an eye out for, there are black dragons and holy dragons, and they're the new ones that you haven't fought previously in the game. Um, and they have lots of HP. The black dragons can cast kill on party members, and the holy dragons can cast holy. But uh, they all offer lots of experience for beating them, so uh, if you find them, then so much the better. I have to fight two holy dragons as it is anyway, because uh, it's part of his requirements. Okay, here's one of them. Now, with them casting holy... Now, holy just does lots of non-elemental damage there, 
but they also have high attack power. So what are you weak to anything? No, not particularly. Okay, so we'll just cast Proterra. Um, well, maybe we should... Is it worth it? Let's see how much damage we do just with our regular attacks first. I'll cast Proterra, and then we'll just uh, pre-cast Hilaga just to be safe. Eh, that's not too bad. How much damage do I do? Oh, okay, we don't, we don't need Saber and all that stuff. We'll have them dead in the next round, so that's fine. But yeah, keep an eye out for these guys, because if they cast Holy on you, it might hurt a lot, because it's not elemental damage, and that can, that can sting a bit. So, uh, yeah, just keep doing that. Good. It's funny how the Mass Immune actually did more damage there than Sid's Fists. And look at that, lots of XP for killing them, and lots of money, too. Not that I need the money, but, you know. Um, was this guy part of the requirements? No, no, he was not. This. Oh, this, no, you know what? This is the guy that can cast kill and stuff on you, so maybe I should cast Null Death. Uh, we all have Ribbons and Protect Rings, so we shouldn't have any problems, but I'm just going to cast it anyway to be safe. And maybe after this floor, we'll uh, restore Moira's and Russo's MP as well, just to be sure that we're okay. Go away, Death! You're not welcome here! I wonder if he's uh, undead. So he would be uh, take a big hurting from my sun sword there. We might find out, or this might happen, because he has like 1600 HP according to the, the guide there. Uh, so we needed one red dragon, two holy dragons, and two white dragons, I believe. So we've got the one holy dragon out of the whole thing. And do it doesn't matter too much if you um, if you just fight as many dragons as possible because they get you good experience, so that should help a little bit. And to be fair, most of the dragons don't have that much HP. Other than the, um, the black dragons and the holy dragons, none of the dragons have more than 500 health, so if you have somebody with high attack power, you should be fine. Uh, this one is one of the ones that I needed. It's pretty easy, though. Uh, Mage Step would probably be better because he's probably more inclined to use Ice attacks. Not that he'll get a chance to use them, but you know. Just fight our way to one side of the room, then fight our way back to the other side, so. I think that should uh, be sufficient in killing these things. The ones that we need, anyway. And if not, then we'll just, I don't know, go in a different direction and try things. We'll just keep on trying until something sticks, that's all. goal of getting to the basement fifth floor, of course. Once we get there, we'll be in better shape. Still haven't seen a red dragon yet, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. I think that's the second white dragon we needed, though, so we need one more holy dragon and then also a red dragon. I might check with Bahama just to see what we've got here. What's up there? One red dragon, one holy dragon. Okay. I will go look for them, Dark Bahamut. Oh, there's the one holy dragon. Um, hmm. Yeah, we'll just do this. We'll do uh, that. In preparation, because ow! That's, that's the basic gist of it. This shit hurts! Thankfully, Moira is um, pretty good about getting us back to full health, so it shouldn't be a huge deal. Um, yeah, just, just attack there, Russo. I think we should have him this round, so we'll be good. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now we just need one red dragon. That's not a red dragon. We should also get a better um, attacking option than the level 2 spells in this dungeon, too. Although that one is going to be directly from a boss, so I don't have to worry about getting a drop or something like that. So 
that will help us out immensely as well. Yeah, just like I said, these white dragons are more about casting ice spells. So using the Mage's Staff is probably a little bit better. When we find the red dragon, I'll be, uh, probably just use the black robe instead of the Mage's Staff. Okay, and we gained some levels out of it. Cool. At this point, our levels aren't really all that important, because we've pretty much got most of the levels that we need to complete all this content, albeit a little bit trickily with the enemies that we have to fight later on. Okay, here's the red dragon that we needed, so I'll just do that, and then that. So yeah, we might have a little bit of trouble with the enemies, uh, the bosses, that is, at the end of this dungeon, and also with the, um... What's it called? The enemies at the end of um, the Labyrinth of Time. But other than that, we should be okay. Okay, I've done what you asked. I see that you are worthy of proceeding. You are free to pass. But remember this, the real trial is only just beginning. All right, cool. And now, if you try to fight the dragons, you can't. Um, they just tell you that they have to earn his favor and all that stuff. So now I think the stairs are here somewhere, right? Yeah, here we go. Okay, and we've reached the fifth basement floor, so let's heal up while we're here. And then, once we're all topped off there, we can begin exploring the floor and seeing what it has to offer, because this is where our first boss lies. I'm going to save it because we're down here real quick. That should help. Now, the thing about this uh, floor is that you have to find hints about where the boss is. He can be in a few different locations, but we need to talk to NPCs to find out where. So let's get that started. Ah, the Mermaid Village of Seahold, I see. Hmm. I don't know anybody who carries a halberd. A sword of matchless power, huh? Well, maybe several pillars standing in a diagonal row. There should be a mermaid there. Try asking her. Okay, sounds good. I wonder if he's looking for... Where is it? There it is. The Excalibur. That's distinctly possible. It is advertised as a sword made of metal that is ridiculous and has matchless power, but, you know. So we're looking for several pillars in a diagonal row. Maybe here? Let's look. Oh, I guess we found him. <laughs> uh, by accident, I wasn't talking to the Blue Mermaid, but eventually they meander around and let you go through these areas, so... Would I help you chase him out of there? Sure, why not? Yeah, I know. Thank you for unlocking the door. So yeah, basically, eventually you'll get, um... Oh. Huh. I thought he'd be in here somewhere. Maybe he left. Let's find out. Well, I'd like to, but I have other business to attend to. Tch. So is this chest the one that I'm looking for then, or did he move to a different room? Let's find out. No, he did not. Ha 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 ha! I'm afraid the contents of this chest are already in my possession! Ha! And thanks to you, the route of my egress is clear! But before I go, I think I'll test the power of Excalibur on... Oh... YOU! Turn that frickin' music up, man! Because the best damn minor villain in the series is here. Gilgamesh. He is from Final Fantasy V. He's a minor antagonist in the game, but he is damn full of character, and he's gonna let you see that in this fight. But listen to the music while I prep everything here.
God, it's so good. <laughs> oh, man. Such a good song. Um, Gilgamesh's Clash on the Big Bridge is a classic Final Fantasy uh, melody there. It's a classic tune, but they updated it for the PSP version with this rockin' soundtrack here, this rockin' remix, and it's pretty fantastic, if I do say so myself. It's one of my favorite songs uh, normally in the Final Fantasy series. So when they introduced rock into it, you can understand why I'm pumped about it. Uh, but anyway, let's see here. Uh, we got a layer of Invisor and two layers of Proterra up on us, so let's do a white robe and then just start attacking and spamming Hialaga, and we should be okay. He's got like 9,000 HP, so it's it's not too bad. Um, once Sid and uh, Norn start punching things with their fists and swords, we should be okay. He can hit pretty hard, though, so that's why I kind of wanted to buff up my defense a little bit before we moved on here. Two layers of Proterra and Invisor should be enough to last us the entire fight. Especially when we're doing that much damage there with just two of our guys, so, like, <laughs> I'm sure you can understand how that can all work out in our favor. Uh, really, honestly, I think it would be better for Russo to just keep stacking Proterra and Invisera as much as I can. Like I said, it stacks up to four times, so his offense at this point isn't all that great, so the more he stacks, the better off we are when Gilgamesh fights us. Unfortunately, Gilgamesh's fight isn't going to be... Uh, that long of a fight because he's uh, not exactly the most powerful enemy here. He's the, he's the first boss fight that we're going to have in here, so he can't be that strong. I just realized, though, I meant to quote the quote from Final Fantasy XII when he shows up, um, but I haven't quoted it yet, and I don't remember exactly what he says. It's something like, he's voiced by John DiMaggio in Final Fantasy XII, which is like, how do you get better than that? Like, come on. Uh, what does he say? It's something like... Um, Long have I sought the Blade of Legend, scoured have I the farthest marches east and west, and now my search has led me here, to you! Your weapons are forfeit to me! He's such a ham in Final Fantasy XII, and I love it! Unfortunately, in this one, he doesn't get much chance to talk to you, but, uh... It's fine. I love you, Gilgamesh! I'll see you again in Final Fantasy V when we eventually get to that. And for defeating him, we obtain the Genji Gloves, which would be good for Norn if I didn't have her on Protect Rings for the instant death nullification. So probably won't be equipping those, unfortunately. And for defeating Gilgamesh, the lock to the next floor opens up. Now we just have to find it. Not very exciting. I would, I would have called that pretty damn exciting. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so this is the blue mer mermaid that they were trying to tell us to go and see, but... Uh, yeah, we, we took care of him pretty handily, so we didn't need to do that. Uh, okay, we don't need to go that way. Excuse me! I need to find the stairs. So I think there's, like I said, three different rooms that you can find Gilgamesh in, and that was one of them. So we need to find the stairs, which are in one of the other rooms. So I think this one down here is another place that you can go to see him. And there's one other place that you can go that I'm not so certain. And it's not necessarily a, a treasure chest that he ends up in, either. He could end up um, at a sword, which looks like Excalibur, but it's actually Excalibur, which is what he used on me at the very beginning of the fight there, and it was the thing that only dealt one damage. Um, that is the fake Excalibur, so... You don't want that! That's no good. But Gilgamesh always seems to get stuck with it, because it's, it's just part of his character. He's Like I said, he's a large ham, so in a way he's comic relief because he's comic relief, he gets relegated to being a good character, but kind of a dimwit when it comes to that sort of stuff. Are those robots from the Lufinian Empire? Huh. Uh, is this the surface thing? Oh, there's the stairs down there, okay. So basically, because you fought a boss on this floor, this means you can return to the surface if you step on this portal. Um, it will ask you if you want to or not, but we're not gonna do that because uh, we want to keep going here. We want to do all of this in one go if we can. Um, and because of that, I think I'm going to top myself off again real quick. And then we'll uh, proceed. Okay, that takes care of that. Um, to show you how good the Genji Gloves are, though, 
Yeah, much better. Um, I mean, you know, not much, not much better, but the evasion that you get out of it is a much more uh, powerful than you'd otherwise get. I mean, if we get Genji armor somewhere around here, because I think you can get that from one of the random chests in this area, I'm definitely giving that to Norn, because her ruby armlet at this point, it's just not really cutting it the way that the diamond armlet is for Russo. There is exclusive gear that you can get all over this place, but it's in chests randomly, so I'm pretty much not counting on getting any of that stuff. I'm only going to count on the things that are 100% guaranteed in terms of what I can equip. Um, so, yeah, that's how that works. Uh, let's see. With the four ribbons on, I think I can get away with it. Let's let's give it a shot. We'll, we'll equip the Genji gloves for now, and then if I get into a situation with Norn where I really need the protect ring on because she keeps getting killed by instant death attacks or something, then we'll uh, then we'll switch up our ways there. And here's another one of the maps that is... I don't know if this one's tricky, but this one is its different from the regular old shrine maps. Um, this one, you're in a canoe in a sunken town, and I think there are no monsters here, as I recall. So we're going to see whether or not that's true. The exit is in one of these doors, so you're going to want to... Um, not in one of the sunken doors, but in one of the doors that's not submerged. So you're going to want to check and see if there's any treasure around before you go there, because there's no monsters, so it's pretty easy to go and find the treasures in here. There's another emergency exit in case we need it. Um, I don't remember how many treasures are on this floor, though. It's, it's not a huge area to go wandering around in, so it's not too bad, but you can't sprint. You can only use the canoe at walking speed, so that's a thing. Cockatrice Claw. There's another chest there. Um, but eventually one of the... Basically, if I remember right, the doors, if they don't lead anywhere, like if it doesn't lead to the exit, it just doesn't let you go through, so. Just some money. But if it does lead to the exit, obviously you'll end up on a different floor there, so. Um, does this lead up and around to that other treasure chest there? No, not quite. Uh, and this just leads to a building, right? I, oh, I can go this way, never mind. I was going to say, I might have to go all the way up and around there, but actually, I don't. I can just go this way. And then we'll just try the doors one at a time and see what we find. Eventually, we'll find our way off this floor. Blue Fang, okay. Nope, not that one. Nope. How about the one I was right next to? Nope. Would have been nice, but, uh, yeah. And I mean, you can re-roll the floors by exiting the dungeon early, like after you fight Gilgamesh there, and you can get multiple copies of Genji Gloves and that sort of stuff if you really want them, but I'm kind of like, eh, I don't need that that badly. The gear that I have is sufficient for what I need it for. I just need to be sure that I'm healing efficiently all the way through. Aha, here we go. Now we're in another shrine area. Um, what do we have here? This one looks more like it's sunken into the ground. I'll have to keep that in mind for when I look at the maps. And we're back to this. <laughs> I don't mind this, like I said, but it's it's kind of like... Eventually you're like, well, this isn't exactly strategic in any way. Just mashing the X button over and over. Really, these, these dungeons are more for the boss fights that you end up finding, I suppose. But... Eh. Not too bad, they're just not my favorite, that's all. It's not a bad thing that you put in content like this, where the items that you get inside are basically only there to make... Like, the items that you would get in the game are sufficient for the game itself, but the items you get in here are good to make you... let you do more additional content. Um, that's fine, but I would rather that you add onto the game that you already had. And if the items that you got in the regular game were sufficient, the only way to add onto the game as a whole is to include story elements here that weren't present in the regular game. Uh, Final Fantasy II's uh, story from its bonus dungeon, I think, does it a little bit better than this one does. So that's just my two cents, though. Um, like I said, I think I said it previously, Final Fantasy IV's uh, quote-unquote bonus content is basically an entirely 
an entire another game, the After Years, so, um, that, I think that one, out of all of the bonus content in all of the remastered versions of these games for Final Fantasy 1 through 6, I think that Final Fantasy 4's does it best out of all of them, because, um, and, and even just within the vanilla content, I think it does a pretty damn good job of it, too. Just in the content in regular Final Fantasy IV, because um, in the GBA version, they added, I think it was the, the... It was some sort of trial area where you could get ultimate weapons for people that aren't normally able to participate in the final battle. And then you could go to the... Um, basically go to this one temple area in, on the... Um, in the world of Final Fantasy IV, where they're all located, and you could switch out your party members for the, from the regular five members that you get for the entire final dungeon to other members that you wouldn't normally have. And because you have ultimate weapons and armor for them, it makes things much easier for them to uh, keep up in the final battle. So, I think I like that pretty well. It, it takes the concept from the Dawn of Souls version here, where you're fighting through all of these monsters in order to get better equipment, and it says, well, instead of making it so that you can... Instead of making this a feedback loop where you get you fight monsters to get better weapons in order to fight better monsters in these dungeons in order to get better weapons in these dungeons exclusively, why don't we make it so that you can get exclusive equipment for characters that don't normally get to participate in the final battle, and then we let them participate in the final dungeon and the final battles there. Because some of those um, party members that you can get ultimate equipment for uh, actually perform better than the five that you would normally be using. So it's it's nice to, that you're able to optimize a party if that's what you're all about, or you can make things more challenging by bringing party members that aren't necessarily as good at doing things as the regular five that you would normally have at the end of the game. Um, in this case, it's kind of just like, well, if I feel like doing this, I can, but if I don't feel like doing this, I won't. <laughs> so. Now I need to find my way out of here. So, let's take a look at the maps here, see if I can find which shrine this is. Uh... one of these. Oh no, I know which one it is. It's this one, I think. The exit is actually not far from where we are. Yeah, I'm going right now. So that's cool. Let's go and find it. I think as I recall, the exit is like up over here, if it's where I'm thinking. You'd think that that little jut out area with the treasure would stick out on a map, but it's apparently, apparently I'm not really seeing it. Uh, not that one. We'll just go through them in order here. Hang on. Let me, let me do this while I'm going through them and let them skill things while I'm looking for where I am. Uh, nope, that was the floor we started on. Which, one, which map it is just from looking at it, so let's just have a wander around and see what we can find. Uh, this way, maybe. Uh, no, not that way. <laughs> uh, did I start down here? Maybe I did. 
Let's look. Nope, haven't been here yet. Hermes Shoes, that'll let us cast Haste for free, which is... Eh, okay. I mean, haste doesn't cost that much, so it's not a huge deal. Ah, another chance for Zephyr Capes. Okay, I'll take it. Glad Norn's only taken the one damage now. It should help her a lot. Of course, the Mass Immune was already a huge help, and again, we got that in the content, so... so there's a few little rooms. There was one shrine map that said there was a bunch of little rooms. And then I won't know which floor this was, but at the very least, I'll have gotten out of here. Gotta look and see if there's like a path leading southeast because I think that's where the exit is. The exit's in the southeast for that one. And there's a little room like that, and I, I think I'm going the right way. I think I am. If this map is correct, that means that there's a little meandering path that goes down here. There's a treasure chest in this room, and the exit's right there. Yes. Okay. Well, there could be a treasure chest in there. Doesn't necessarily mean that there is a treasure chest in that room. Just means it's possible, but it doesn't mean it's going to be. Move my thing up here real quick. There we go. Alrighty, let's move on. Once we deal with this pack of goblins. A goblin arisen! Goblins hate fire! They attack in groups, or is it? I mean, I was told when Dragon's Dogma was around that you could make your pawns not as talkative. I don't think that was entirely true. That being said, to be honest with you, they're not nearly as bothersome as a lot of people make it sound like they are. The pawns, that is, when they talk. It's just when you have, like, three or four of them in the party with you at once, which... Why would you ever do that? Um, that it becomes a little bit more troublesome. Um, I am next to pillars, so that means I'm probably here. Or here. It's one of these temples. Or maybe this is the Marsh Cave map, actually. Yes, yes it is. Okay. So actually, we're not too far from the exit, we just need to head east. Okay, I can do that. 
And hey, look, there's even enemies here that were... Um, well, actually, no, Skulgers are uh, different enemies than the ones that you fight in the Marsh Cave. But their uh, basic gist of it is that they're the same kinds of monsters you would have fought in the Marsh Cave. It's, uh, skeletal enemies, there's probably Mind Flayers down here. I don't know, they died of the Light Axe, that's all I know. Excuse me. And this room is actually nice, because it can have two treasure chests over here, which is good. Might get some more Genji, but you never know. You could have gotten lucky um, if you had found the War Mech there, because if you find the War Mech in the Flying Fortress, he has a chance of dropping Genji armor. Which is nice, because it seems like body armor is the hardest thing to come by for a lot of classes other than knight in this game. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that later. And it's, it's honestly mostly because of the fact that um, the white and black robe are so useful as items to use in battle, so you end up not being able to use them as actual armor pieces until later when you can purchase them in one of the places, the shops in Whisperland Cove. And then it's like, okay, now I can equip it. But before that, you're just like, well, it's better. Is it better for me to equip it, or is it better for me to keep it in my item slot so that literally anyone can use it? And more often than not, it's better to do the latter option. So there's our stairs to get out of here, but we need to meander our way this way in order to get to them. So let's go do that. Is this the ninth basement floor? I guess I can look on my map and see, because after this we'll have another boss fight. Uh, and we're at the halfway point, actually, of this whole dungeon. Which is not bad, I think I'm making pretty good progress. Um, the final bosses of this dungeon will probably take me a few tries, and a while, but you know. Um, yes, basement nine, okay. Good, good. Um, we need to go this way and then around. There's another treasure chest, but... Eh. Don't need it. 99, nice. Not the damage cap, but, you know, it'll work. Yeah, as you can see, Norn's evasiveness at this point is kind of ridiculous thanks to that Genji shield. Um, and she will get even more evasive once we get to the other shield that's available. Coming up shortly. And by shortly, I mean at the end of this dungeon, so. You will see what it is by the time we're done here today. The pace we're going, if we keep up the same pace, I don't think we're going to be able to get through all of this and start exploring Whisperwind Cove for the next time. Um, we'll probably save all of that for next time. Maybe we'll do like the first 30 floors or something in Whisperwind Cove on the next stream, which is going to happen tomorrow. And then um, following that, we'll finish Whisperwind Cove and then start up the Labyrinth of Time. Granted, I know nothing about the Labyrinth of Time, but we'll have to figure that out when we get there. Okay, so here's our boss for the 10th floor here. So let's see, do I need to heal? No, I do not. Cool! I can just save it, take a drink of water, and then we can start up this boss fight. Now, I think this guy's a little bit trickier. Um, thanks to an ability that he has. So, And the ability that he has is all centered around instant death, so uh, you'll have to understand why. It just gives her that extra layer of protection, and with that, everybody has two layers of death protection, so we should be halfway decent against this guy. Interlopers. And by contrast to the um, kick and remix that they made for Gilgamesh, there, I'm not as big of a fan as uh, of the Final Fantasy V boss theme remix that they have here. It's just, I don't know, it just seems like they just made it orchestrated um, version of the actual one, and I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know if that does it for me. But anyway, same thing as always, we will start by using the Giant's Gloves, get Temper, Haste, and Saber on Sid, we'll get Proterra going, and once we get Proterra going, we'll see what we need to do from there. I might cast Null Death here at some point just to be absolutely 100% safe, but I think we should be okay. His damage is... it's okay. Not fantastic, but it's okay. Okay, so get haste and temper on yourself there, Norn, and then Sid, use the white rope to get us all in up. We'll do... 
Do I have a curtain that casts Null Death? Actually, I might. Yeah, Lunar Curtain does, so we'll cast Null Death that way. S since Russo is, uh... Uh-oh. Okay, good. That's the attack that you gotta watch out for. Wormhole there, because it casts... It causes instant death on the party member there. It's part of Atomos's, um gimmick in Final Fantasy V, because in that game, when he uses Wormhole on you, uh, well, actually, he doesn't start the battle by using Wormhole, he uses Comet until you die, and then once you die, he sucks you into his Wormhole there, and if you, your party member gets sucked into the Wormhole, they get permanently ejected from the battle, and they don't earn any experience, which is, I mean, not a huge deal in Final Fantasy V, because experience is pretty plentiful, and you don't need to be that high of a level to beat the final boss, but I'd rather everybody keep even in this particular instance here. So we'll just do our usual, we'll uh, make it so that he can barely hit us, and spam Hilaga and do all that good stuff. And eventually he'll go down. HA! Um, yeah, do Vizera this turn. Go, attacking, and then... Um... While we're waiting... See, the only problem is that, uh, for right now, I don't have a good option of attack for um, Moira, since she doesn't um, since she doesn't have any real attacking. I mean, she has Holy, but Holy doesn't actually deal that much damage. So let's um, let's use a few of these crappy items that I don't really need from my inventory here. There's Comet. Ow! <laughs> I think a Kiraga is in order there. Maybe a Hilaga too, just to be safe. So yeah, her options to attack at this point are kind of limited, but we should be okay. Hiraga going... The thing about Comet is that it's non-elemental, so you can't really avoid the um, damage from it, so it makes things a little bit more tricky. But, as long as you keep your HP up, you should be fine. Russo's kind of got to be my Swiss Army Knife here, because his attacking stats aren't exactly the greatest for right now. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, like I said, we've got enough death protection here to really last us, so. Um, actually, probably just physically attacking can contribute a little bit to the damage here, so that's fine. And we'll just use Hilaga again. I mean, it's not much, but it's better than nothing. I just gotta wait for him to use Comet there so that I can use a combination of Hiraga and Hilaga the next turn to bring their HP back up. Norn should be able to survive one more comet here, but uh, thankfully we don't have to because Adamos is down. Hell yeah! And that's halfway through the Life Spring Garden. And for defeating Adamos, we get the Judgment Staff. What does the Judgment Staff do? Well, I believe it's Black Wizard only in terms of being able to be equipped, but when you use it in battle as an item, it casts Flare. So that's much better than the other attacking options that Moira would have normally, and actually it's better than most of the attacking options that Russo has at this point too. He'll get a better attacking option once we get into Whisperwind Cove, like I've been saying, but for now this is probably a pretty good way of going about it. It's not until Final Fantasy III that they started making stuff like that exclusive to one particular class or the other, like in Final Fantasy III, that um, staff that casts Flare there would only be usable by the actual Black Wizards in the game, um, if they had that stipulation. In this game, don't gotta worry about that little stipulation, because it doesn't exist, thankfully for us. Now, there's a couple of ways out of here, like before, I believe there is a staircase, and then there's another altar that you can use to get out of here as well. I don't remember if it's this way or what. Here's the stairs. There's another altar there that you can use to get out, but uh, we're not going to bother with that because we have more randomized dungeon crawling to do here instead. So let's go do that. Ah, the Chaos Temple. Uh, not exactly, but you know. There are three temple areas that you can find yourself in here, and I think... We are in this one. Yeah, it looks like it. And actually, the stairs are like right next to us, so that's pretty fantastic. Um, is it worth going and getting the items here? No, I don't think it really is, but we gotta go this way. Uh, there's an, a chest up that way on a long meandering path, but the stairs are right here, so I'm just gonna take them. <laughs> 
And we're back to this. I'm gonna keep saying that, sorry. Uh, let's try out the Judgment Staff, see if we can't get it to be used here before the boss uh, battle's over. As long as none of them run away, we'll get to see it. Or rather, not one of the other ones runs away. Here we go. Boom! Big damage. Not bad, Moira, not bad. 350 damage to everything on the field, that's pretty freaking fantastic. That's better than most um, damage that you'll get out of weaknesses from the level 2 elemental stuff, so that's pretty nice. Makes things very, very good for us. Uh, that was the one I was just in. This one has me in the bottom left-hand corner. So it's probably this temple area. Not that one, this one. Right? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Well, let's have a look around. Let's see what we can find out in this area. Let's see if there's rooms or what. That will give us an idea. So there's pillars placed on this one that make it a little bit more challenging to get around. There's a chest here next to a pillar. Now, which one? Probably this one. So the exit is east of me, I believe, if this is the map that I'm thinking of. There's also treasure in that room there, so... Nah, we can't get to it from here. Let's see if we can get to it, and we'll see if we can grab the treasures, but after that I'm heading straight for the stairs. Got the coin and the materials? Then hand them over so that I can do some smithing. Otherwise, head straight for the door! But how will I make my boss demon souls if I'm heading straight for the door? Well, I won't in this playthrough. That's a different one. Light curtain, so that's not bad. Uh, I believe we just want to generally be moving further to the east. Yeah, see, there's the stairs there. Question is, can I get to them from here? <coughs> Excuse me. Answer is, probably not. If you want my honest opinion, though, I think it would be better if, um... Like, if you're playing through this game yourself, I think it's a better idea to do, like, the first 20 floors of the Whisperwind Cove before you come here. And then come here, beat the whole thing, and go from there. Because I believe on the 20th floor of Whisperwind Cove is where you can fight something that drops a better healing staff that you can use in battle. It casts Healara when used as an item, which is better than the other ones, so... Hey, Panda, how's it going? It's going pretty nice for me. Um... Good to see you here, man. I appreciate you coming out. Oh, the dancer room. Great. Um, so, we have to figure out which one of these ways is the proper way to go. Uh, hmm. Up or down? It doesn't really say up or down, so I'm just gonna say go for it. Eh. Pardon me, excuse me, ladies, I'll just, um, let me just pass real quick, and oh, I just made it harder for myself, didn't I? Oh my god! <laughs> okay. We're out of there. I believe there's only three chests that you can get on this floor, but, uh, again, I'm not really that concerned with them, because the paths that you go along just kind of all fall into themselves eventually. Uh, is it worth... I was gonna say, is it worth going and getting it, but... Now that I already saw it, I gotta go get it. Hold on. <laughs> it's not like this is that troublesome. It's not like I'm fighting enemies while meandering through all of these uh, dancers here. Alright, come on. There we go. Sorry for bumping all of you. I don't need a sexual harassment lawsuit. Um, I guess so. <laughs> oh, so this is the one where you have to... Okay. Okay. 
Ah, uh oh, feeling a little sick? Yeah. That was what I was trying to avoid when I was at PemStream last week, man. And I, I didn't actually get a bug when I was uh, doing all that. Ooh, power plus, nice. Well, I hope you feel better. Uh, take plenty of vitamin C, drink plenty of liquids, and maybe uh, think about taking some zinc tablets with food occasionally for like the next week or two, and you should be okay. Uh, that power plus will actually raise our attack power. Where did it go? Here it is. Raise our strength. So I'm going to give that to um, Sid, I think. Just might as well stack strength on strength there. That'll make things a little bit easier. When he's punching things to death. So. And now the exit should be in the other part of the course then. Like I said, though, thankfully there are no enemies to run into on this floor, so it makes things a little bit easier. Don't gotta worry about all these random battles while you're walking around, so... Oh, so it's like food poisoning or that sort of a thing. Maybe not food poisoning, but just stomach problems from eating something like that. Okay. That sucks, man. I hope you can feel better anyway. Maybe, maybe some ginger ale would be a good idea at this point. Usually helps me when I uh, feel sick to my stomach like that. Mm, papaya enzyme too. Papaya enzyme always helps. Um, I am basically I have two save files. The first one I'm at the doorstep of the final boss, and this one is the save file I'm using for all of the bonus content here. So I'm just taking care of all the bonus content that I have to take care of, and then I'll be fighting the final boss and beating the game. So uh, pretty much at the end, just taking care of all the extra side stuff that you don't have to take care of in order to uh, finish it all out there. Uh, this is the library. Exit is north of me. And to get north of me, I have to go west. Okay. So we have to go generally this way. And we can talk to the scholars along the way, I guess. It does beg the question, though, what kind of an alternate reality are all of these places in? Like, is this just, like, some weird alternate universe where the Four Fiends didn't do crazy things to the Crystal's power, or what? But, uh, don't you dare go right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Only played 15. 15's a good game, from what I've played of it. Um, I'm waiting to play 15 until they're done releasing as much DLC as they want to release for it. Um, I, I will play it eventually for the stream, but not quite yet. You said you were going to play it for the actual stream, though, right? Because you were you said you were going to start streaming it again. I looked at Discord um, at one point, but I don't remember how long ago it was that I looked at it, and I know you said that you were thinking about starting it up again. This one's fun, though. Um, this is... I played this originally on the Game Boy Advance when it came out, and this is the PSP version of it. Uh, it's like a remastered version of the GBA version with a little more bonus content, but I, this version I like a lot. It's like the definitive version of the game for me. And it's got a lot of nostalgic value for me, so that's why I started with it when uh, I heard that the 30th anniversary was so close. So, Ah, another temple area. Okay. Uh, this is the last one, and this is also the 15th floor of the dungeon. So we only got five more to go, and then we'll be in good shape. Um, maybe? No, I don't think that's... This is the one I'm looking directly at. Hold on. I have maps to help me get through this area. Um, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing have a map for this, but uh, I'm using it anyway. Exit is in the bottom left-hand corner. Okay. Streaming it on Mondays. Okay. Yeah, I think it's worth it to pick up the classic games, to be honest with you. Um, it's it's good, I think, to get an idea of, oops, of where the um, where the series got its start, basically, where it got its roots from. That's my two cents, though, so it's it's really up to you if you decide to pick these up. Um, they're a little bit more slow-paced than a lot of the later games because they started moving more into, like, action RPG territory with Final Fantasy XV, um, and they kind of moved a little bit in that direction with Final Fantasy XIII when they did that. It was more action-oriented um, active time battle system. Uh, 
than the older games. This game is pure turn-based, so it's uh, a little bit slower paced, but if you don't mind the fact that it's a little bit slower paced, it's a lot of fun, I think. I have my misgivings about the bonus content because it's, like I, I said it a few minutes ago, but it's basically one giant feedback loop um, on itself. You don't need any of the items in here to beat the main game at all, uh, which is why I kept that one save file right in front of the final boss before I started doing the bonus content. Um, because I don't want to use the stuff in here to beat the, bon the final boss the, uh, of the regular game. That's like uh, easy mode, basically. So I said, you know what, we're just gonna we're just gonna fight the boss the way that the developers intended. And on this separate file, we're just going to completely break the game by getting all of the bonus dungeon content out of the way and getting all of the good stuff that they've got going on there. That's yeah, just my opinion, though. Uh, um, this way, I think. Yeah, this should work. Anything on these gravestones? No. Not quite. Well, I would hope it would be a preemptive strike. It's one gloom though. Like, come on. I'm also trying to figure out how I would feel about them adding new enemies to the mix in these dungeons, because seeing the same enemies over and over again is, like... Of course, it's boring, because it's, I can just do this every single fight. But, at the same time, would it make the bonus content better if there was new things to discover in these maps when at, this, at the initial stage of the bonus content, I'm like, do I really need to do that? I'm not sure. It might make things more interesting because there'd be actual new stuff to see, but if it didn't tie back into the story somehow, I don't know how I would feel about that. Maybe we'll find out more when I do, um, because I think the bonus content in Final Fantasy IV is more like that, where it um, has new enemies to discover in the areas in addition to the other stuff that you find there, like other weapons from characters and that sort of stuff. So I don't know how I feel about that, but I guess I will find out once we eventually get to Final Fantasy IV. That's going to be a ways away yet, though, I think. Only a few more areas left to go here. Uh, four of them. Yeah. Yeah, that's... that's. I agree with you on that. Um, and I think sometimes the random encounters in this game are... There's a little bit too many of them, I think, in some cases. And it makes things a little bit challenging to... Uh, to deal with. Because it, you just end up clicking the same buttons over and over again, and that doesn't make things... Um, fun. Or interesting. Shrine. Have I found myself in this time? Maybe this big one. Let's see if I can map the starting position to where I actually am. Well, it's not that important. We'll just meander around, see if we can find our way. Of course, trying to do that has often led to me not being able to find my way, but... Uh... It's one of these ones with all these rooms in it. Could be this one. Could be. I guess we'll see. Speaking of random encounters, I would like to put my opinion out there that when um, the guy that invented the idea of encounters being enemies that you could physically see on the world map, 
I want to shake that man's hand and pat him on the back, or woman, depending on, you know, who made that decision. But I want to find them, shake their hand, and pat them on the back, because that was an excellent decision um, that I would like to see in more games, basically. Because being able to see the enemies on the world map and deciding, well, should I fight them or should I not, is... And I mean, you know, you can do it like where if they see you, they start chasing after you or whatever, because then you can either fight them or you can learn how to avoid them, that sort of stuff. But it allows you to control directly the amount of experience that you gain. In most games where there's random encounters like this one, it's like you could run away, but is there a reason for you to run away? Um, in some cases, yes, there is. If we get to something like Final Fantasy V, where there's an item that specifically benefits from you running away a certain number of times, sure, by all means, give me the flea button, I'll run away. Um, make it simple for me to run away, make it so I'm not taking too much damage when I run away, and cool, we're all, we're all fine and good. But in a game like this, they hide the runaway button and on the bottom of the drop-down map, uh, or the drop-down menu for in the turn-based combat, and most of the enemies really don't take that long to fight, so probably running away would be just as um, efficient as, in terms of time used, as just killing them outright. So, yeah, especially if you're role-playing, it lets you decide whether it's like, okay, well, I'm... Am I? How many resources do I have left? Am I low on resources? If I'm low on resources, will my characters really say, should I fight these guys or not? Then, and then you can kind of go from there. Um, I understand why random encounters exist in the earlier games, um, because it, it, I mean, you, you look at games like this that came out in 1987. You look at games like um, the Dragon Warrior games that came out in the 80s and the 90s, and random encounters make sense because you can't program in that much stuff into the game to where you can have all of these enemy sprites all over the map. It would clutter up the, the game file and your game would be shorter as a result. They were working with limited hardware, I guess is the point. But when you're not working with limited hardware anymore and you have enough space on the cartridge, the disc, all of that stuff to program in enemies that you can see so that you can control your game in experience and your how many resources you use and all that, I say go for it. I know, so basically, I know why they did random encounters in this remastered version of Final Fantasy 1, but if I could have it the other way, I would definitely want it the other way, so... Yeah, that's just how I feel about that. Um, exit on this one is in the bottom right-hand corner, and there's only one chest on this whole map, it looks like. I guess we could go get it. Um, it's not that far out of the way, I don't think. I think it's to the east here. Uh, not quite here, almost. Death Manticore! Well, those guys are different. Um, how about we use Thor's Hammer with you, and then we use the Judgment Staff. I haven't been using the Judgment Staff, I've just been sticking with the Thor's Hammer that I've had there normally. Okay, well, they can cast fire, so... Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Um, it would allow you to have a direct impact on your own game experience, I think. It would make it more personally customizable than just having it not be not be there. But, I, I mean, I get it, though. Um, nostalgic value is important, um, especially with games like this that are treasured by a lot of people. So, I understand why it is this way, but I would, I would definitely jump at the chance to have it a different way. That's, that's all I'm saying. I'm going to start using the Judgment Staff instead of other things. You know what it probably is? They're probably putting these Death Manticores in here because it's supposed to be like the Flying Fortress that we went through a while ago, um, where there was more, more enemies like this. Um, more enemies that were more challenging than the standard uh, bonus dungeon rabble that we've been fighting this whole time. Of course, calling these guys challenging might be a uh, misnomer, but... Never get tired of that. <laughs> it's like how they, um, 
did the Meteor spell in Final Fantasy IV's PSP version versus the GBA and SNES versions. In those versions, it was it was a cool spell and all, but, but it was just like little pellets raining down on the thing. Then you get the PSP version that shows Meteor, and it's like, Comet, 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 giant asteroid from space that it cuts to, raining down on the battlefield, and it makes a huge explosion. And it's just... The cinematic value of it is awesome. I, I love it. And when we get to that, I'll, I'll make sure that I mention it. But uh, it's it's pretty in your face, and I really like that. <laughs> um, you could probably kill a death elemental with your physical attack there, uh, Russo. So let's cast Yulaga, because I don't know. I feel like overhealing myself. It's not like I've used any MP otherwise, so we should be fine. Yeah, it's really cool, man. Um, honestly, if you're going to pick up a Final Fantasy, I would say this is a good place to start if you can get your hands on the PSP version of the game. But if you're going to try to find another Final Fantasy game that you'd like to play to start with, Final Fantasy IV is a really good place to start. It's not incredibly difficult to where it's like... Um, you know, it, it kind of puts you off to the series because it has super difficult mechanics to get used to or anything like that. But at the same time, it's got a good story, it's got good characters, it's got good battle mechanics. It's an offshoot of the battle mechanics that you get in this game, really. Um, it's called the Active Time Battle System, where instead of it being turn-based, you wait for a bar to fill up, and then when your bar fills up, you can take your turn, and you can heal, or you can attack, or you can defend, or you can do that sort of stuff. And the enemies all have their own bars that they fill up, and then they attack you with. Um, and you can kind of go from there, and it, it makes battles more dynamic, um, makes things a little more interesting than they are in this, uh, this game, so... Yeah, the Vita has the PSP version, so if you own a Vita or if you own a PlayStation TV, I would say definitely uh, pick up Final Fantasy IV Complete. You will have probably a solid 60 or 80 hours worth of uh, RPG, old-school RPG content to go through if you pick up the Final Fantasy IV Complete Edition on the Vita. It's a good buy. It's a very good buy in my book. Um, the only reason why I'm not using the Vita for this game or for Final Fantasy II is because... Surprisingly, the PSP versions of this and Final Fantasy II are not on the Vita's store, at least not that I could find anyway. Maybe they are, and maybe I'm just not looking enough, but I did a quick search, and the earliest Final Fantasy I could find on there was Final Fantasy III, I think? So, so yeah, I would pick up Final Fantasy IV. It'll be a, a good first experience if you're looking for um, where to start with the series. So. I believe the exit is right over here. Yep. You pop out of there and... Oh, God, the ice caves. <laughs> Good thing we've got protect rings and stuff, because the last time we were here, we died! Well, not quite, but... Uh, who's hurting here? I could use some of those potions that I've been getting from the Black Goblins there. And... Yeah, we could save our ethers. We've got plenty of them, but... Uh, Sorry, I'm gonna preemptively save here just to be safe. Uh, we've got plenty of instant death protection, but I don't want to take any chances if I uh, don't have to. <laughs> Let's see, which one is the ice cave? It's this one. It says there are a lot of damage tiles here, which is fine because they only deal one damage a pop, but I'm not too concerned with that. Uh, yeah, we'll just keep doing what we were doing. As much as I like the Judgment Staff's animation, I think I'm going to save it for um, battles where I actually might need it. Um, battles with stuff like those Death Manticores where they have more HP than just, like, I don't know how much these Black Goblins have, but it's a pittance by comparison to some other enemies in the game. So if I need 300 damage, I'll use the Judgment Staff. If I don't, I'll use one of the level 2 uh, items to even attack with instead. Um... Let's check this map real quick. Let's see. Started here. The exit is there. Okay. That's cool. Um, and in case you're wondering, uh, Panda, I'm treating these floors like... Um, I'm not going for after all the treasure, basically, because a lot of the treasure chests in this area, first of all, whether or not they actually appear 
is randomized, and the contents that you get in them are also randomized. So I could get anything from a really good piece of armor, like the Genji shield that I got for Norn towards the beginning of the dungeon, to a regular old potion or a small amount of money. And at this point, I really don't need any of that stuff. You can get good stuff out of it if you really bother looking through all of it, but I have all the tools I need to beat the game anyway, so I'm not too concerned with uh, really exploring around a lot and finding everything. So if you see me go straight for the stairs, that's why. It's because I'm not... Uh, I don't badly need any of the items in here to the point where I want to look around and find all of the treasure. Just so that you know, that's that's my uh, prerogative in this area. Just trying to keep things moving, basically. That's all it is. Okay, so I want to move generally north, and then south, and then north and east. Okay. That I can do. Is this the branch? It might be. Yeah, it is. Okay. I'm gonna do this way. True. Very true. It's always good to get as much stuff as you can to be fully prepared for an end game, streaming or not. You're correct about that. Um. My personal take on that, at least in this case, is that, um, like I said, a lot of the items have not are not required for me to beat the game. It's good to be prepared, but I'm kind of over-prepared at this point. Um, so that's why I'm kind of ignoring some of the stuff that I could, could get in the game. Now, I'd probably get more out of it overall, but... I don't need the levels that I'd get for the experience that I would get along the way. I don't need the items because I have good enough items. So that's why I'm kind of like, eh, it's not that necessary. This is casual, not completionist, I guess you could say. I guess in that sense, I'm not exactly a completionist. I like exploring the early areas of a game very thoroughly, because I like preparing myself in the early game as much as possible for things. Um, it's, it's, it's easier when I'm not very strong and I'm looking to get strong to justify my exploration. I guess I'm kind of pragmatic with my exploration. If I feel like I'm not... If I feel like I'm prepared enough for the rest of the game, that's when I start being like, okay, I'm just gonna run through this area as quickly as I possibly can, so. It's it's not the best way to do it. It's not the ideal way to do it, for sure. Um, like I said, getting everything that you could possibly get would prepare me more, but I'm prepared enough. And if I feel like I'm prepared enough, it just makes exploration, additional exploration, it makes it feel less, um, Less justified, I guess. I don't know. Um... Well, this is the last temple area. I, I don't specifically know which map it is that we're exploring here, but we can probably find our way. Still haven't gotten a Zephyr Cape from one of these guys, but uh, that's okay. I don't need it that badly. I can buy one or two in the next dungeon anyway, so that should be fine. Granted, it would be better for Russo's um, evasion than the buckler that he has currently, but... Uh, oh, right, I was supposed to not use the healing staff that fight because these guys have a little more HP than Moira can deal with just that. Or rather, not use Thor's hammer. Could have used the judgment staff to destroy the death elementals, but there we go. Is this a treasure room? It could be. That could help me in determining which map I'm on. Here. Hmm. No, I 
was already on that one. I'll find my way around. Killer shark, that's new. Uh, they're probably weak to Thor's hammer, though, so that's okay. And I'll bet you dark guys can probably inflict the dark status. Ooh, wow, he's got some HP, doesn't he? No, not that much, but enough. I think those are the guys that can drop... Um, there's some item that they can drop. I don't remember what it was, but I do remember that it was pretty good. I guess I could look. Let's see here. Killer shark. Killer shark. Ah, here we go. Oh, maybe not. I don't even remember what that item was, so it's it can't be that important if I don't remember what it was. Um, judgment staff, right? Yeah. To ensure that they die. But this is the last floor of randomness in this dungeon. After this, it's the 20th basement floor, and on that one we get our choice of two bosses. And I will save, fight one boss, and then reload and fight the other boss. I'm going to fight them in a specific order because um, one of the bosses actually has an item that is close there. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> uh, one of the bosses that I fight on the next dungeon, um, or on the next floor, is guarding a treasure chest that has an item that I would like to uh, hold on to. Whereas the other boss doesn't guard a chest, and it gives you a rather crappy item as a result of you fighting it. It's a it's a fun boss fight because it's one of the hardest ones in the game, but it's not uh, nothing incredible in terms of uh, what you get out of it. I don't even know what I'm saying. Let's just try to find our way off this floor, <laughs> and then we'll go from there. I'm trying to find, like, a landmark that I could use to um, determine what map I'm on, because it could be this one, but it could not be at the same time. It's a Sage's Surplus. Now, that, I believe, is an equipable piece of armor that you could give to your mages. Um, let's see here. There we go. Enhances intelligence. So it's good for Russo and for Moira. Um, who do I want to give it to? Well, let's check how much it enhances intelligence. Uh, we'll, we'll do it with Moira, because Russo has the diamond armlet for right now, so he's pretty good on defense. So she has 37 intelligence without the Sage's Surplus, and with it... A little less evasion, but that's okay. With it, she has 42. Now, intelligence affects how much she heals, so I'm okay with that. We'll, we'll do that. That was a good replacement for her ruby armlet there. Now all I gotta do is find uh, replacements for the ruby armlet for Norn and Sid, and then we'll be... We'll be in good shape. Um, I'm gonna have you attack those guys back there. We can probably do that. And then... Yeah, judgment stuff. Ow. That hurt a little bit. But we can mitigate most of that with the healing staff, so it's fine! Um, the items that I'm getting here, Panda, I'm really only using them like this as an item it, because it allows me to avoid using a lot of my MP on the way through this dungeon. That's one thing that Final Fantasy 1 did that not a lot of the other games in the series do, is that it lets you use the um, items that you could equip to attack with them in some way. Um, it's, it's a pretty good feature, I think, because of the high encounter rate. 
but um, you won't see it very often outside of this one. I think Final Fantasy 3 does it again, um, a little bit. Final Fantasy 2 definitely does it, but it's not as useful in that one as it is in this one. They nerfed it. Uh, Final Fantasy 4 does it a little bit, and it's helpful in the beginning of the game, but usually not as much towards the end. Um, and after that, I can't really think of any examples of um, attacking items. At least not in the way that this game has them, so... Yes, definitely saves on MP, uh, which saves me on resources, because then I don't have to use so many ethers trying to get through this dungeon, so... Nothing in here. So this is a, a room at the end of a dead end. That's a good landmark that might help me to figure out where the hell I am. Uh... I'm going to say it's this one. And if that's the case, we're closer to the exit than we think. Which is good. What you got, goblins? Ha! You cannot touch me. I have too much evasiveness. I have over 100 evasiveness. Go on, pal. Go outside. Go on. Second, I gotta direct my dog to the door. Hold on. lazy, but I think she deserves the laziness. She's like 18 years old, so she's she's had enough of getting up and going all the time. She, uh, at this point, is okay with sleeping a lot. And if I was correct, yep, there we are. There's our stairs. Okay, 20th basement floor of Life Spring Grotto. We're going to be at this for a few minutes here. <laughs> because up here, once we get further... Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's... Uh... Does the path split and there's two separate rooms? I forget. I forget how this works. Yeah. Okay, so there's one room here, and then I believe on the other side is another room. Now I just need to figure out which one has which enemy in it. I believe it's like the rooms in the Earth Gift Shrine, which we did a couple of streams ago, where if you enter the room before you fight the boss, you can exit. Um, but after you fight the boss, you can't exit the room anymore, and you have to leave. So. Oh, well, good. Good for them. Uh, yeah, she's uh, she's been a good dog her entire life, and she's gotten to a pretty good age. We're, um, we're happy that she's you know, been around for such a long time because she's been a very loyal pet for us. So. Um, just the one ether, I think, and then we're good. I didn't use hardly any of the resources that I was talking about, which is cool. Alright, so let's save it real quick. And then see what we can do about this. Um, what does the map thing say about who is where? I, I guess I could look myself. Doot, 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 doot. So the one I want to fight first is to the left. And then we'll go to the right after that. She is a Cocker Spaniel Poodle mix. Um, and it was chosen because my youngest brother has asthma, and she, her breed is known not to shed very much, uh, from what I understand. So we uh, chose her um, as a result of that. We have another dog, but he's an outside dog because he's a long-haired German Shepherd, and they shed like crazy. So, But yeah, there would be a treasure chest if I went in the other room first. So now, 
Let's give this a shot. It's one of the hardest boss fights in this game, as I said when we were going in here, so... Let's just see how we do. A thousand years it has been since a challenger stood before me. Show me the power you possess. Defeat me, if you can. Well, I'll try, Omega, but I can't promise you anything because I'm not that good at this. Um, okay, so... This is Omega. He is a super boss from Final Fantasy V, and he's very strong. Um, let's see. His physical attacks are your primary issue, because they hit for very, very lots and lots of damage. I'm going to give Norn this giant's tonic that I found, because she has the least amount of HP out of all of us. My first few rounds here are basically going to be used getting us defensively ready for this fight, because otherwise we're going to have some problems. Um, because I'll have to start reviving people, so... Jack Russell Terriers. Yeah, those are cool dogs, too. That was um, one that we were considering at the time when we got our uh, our dog here, but uh, we ended up choosing a Cocker Spaniel Poodle mix instead. Yeah, it's a pretty cool design. Um, I do like Omega's design a lot. It's just the fact of fighting him that makes him a little bit of a jerk, but uh, we'll, we'll see that in just a moment as we go here. I think I'm going to try to get... Um, Three layers of Protect and Invis on the party. Because he does that when he hits you and it hurts like hell. Uh, hopefully I get a turn before Sid dies there. That would not be good. Okay, so that doesn't entirely uh, raise my HP. I have to get it raised otherwise. Okay, so now that we've got that going for us. We need to heal Sid, so let's do a Kiraga Hilaga combo. We'll do another white robe there. Omega's accuracy is through the roof, though, so I don't know how much of a difference this is going to make. Thankfully, we can survive Earthquake. Earthquake is like a godsend because it's going to miss all of us. It's an instant death attack, and we have death protection, so we're good. If he does that, use your opportunity, because he will not give you very many of those. So we're in a little bit better shape. So I cast Haste on Sid there. Um, let's do Temper as well. We'll have Russo use Proterra instead of doing that other stuff because it will make this fight go a little bit smoother. Um, I'll use Saber next round. I want to get another round, uh, another um, thing of Invis up on my party before I do anything else. And here's where the problems start happening because Wave Cannon is powerful. If he does that a couple of times, we're mostly dead, so... Like I said, just gonna give this a shot, see what we can do, and uh, if it doesn't work out, then we'll figure out a way to... keep ourselves from dying next time <laughs> we go through. Um, so we got another thing of Proterra on, so now I need to start hasting up Norn there. We will do the same thing we did, we'll Kiraga Hialaga so that Sid can survive a little bit longer, because we need his DPS uh, badly. Use the giant's gloves to give us some saber, and then we'll be okay, I hope. <laughs> uh, Norn gets her turn faster than everybody else, so maybe next turn I will have her throw an X-Potion Russo's way. That should keep him in better shape. Um, and eventually she'll get herself hasted and tempered up. Uh, or maybe I can t uh, temper her with Russo this turn, because he's not doing a whole lot. Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go, next potion. Toss that at him, and uh, maybe we'll have him use temper on Norn. Sid, you can start attacking now, and just keep using Hilaga, because otherwise we're going to be in trouble. Probably this is how the fight's going to end up going. I'm going to end up having Moira spam Hilaga every turn. Russo's going to be single target casting heals to keep us all up on HP. And Norn and Sid will do their usual thing of attacking. Now, that was with Temper Haste and Saber up, and we did 700, uh, 700 damage with Sid on 28 hits. That's impressive. Omega's got a ton of defense, and he has 35,000 HP. So that makes things a little bit harder to deal with. I think I'm going to get another layer of temper up, to be honest with you. Um, it 
will make this a little easier. He's weak to electricity, so Thundaga will do good damage to him, but uh, I would rather that we live to see the end of this than uh, try to get us in super good shape there. And this is why you have to spam Hilaga every turn, because he'll just wave cannon you into oblivion if you don't, so... A couple layers of temper should help us in terms of our uh, DPS. It's not much because you get diminishing returns with each new stack of it, but uh, yeah, with all of this extra defense and evasiveness, we should be in a little bit better shape than we were. So now we're going to temper up um, Norn there. How are we doing on HP? We're doing okay. I can cast Thundaga this turn and um, yeah, just go to town. See how much damage we do this time. Boy, am I glad I got those protect rings. <laughs> okay, well that was not much better. <laughs> Maybe I should have Norn use Saber. I'm usually against having anybody but my monk use Saber, but maybe I'll make an exception. Let's see how much damage she does now that she's got that extra layer up. Um, okay, we're good on HP, so I'll just keep doing this. Yeah, so you see how much of a difference the Proteras and Invisoras made there? And I mean, it's a long fight. We'll be dealing about, I'm going to say 1,200 to 1,500 damage a turn, but um, so at that rate, it's going to take us a few turns to get through all of this. But if we keep this up, we should be okay. At some point, I'll probably toss that Mega Elixir that I've got there um, at the party, because when I reload to fight the other boss, we'll, um, we'll be better off. So Because the Mega Elixir will be back in my inventory. But if there's ever a time to use it, now is the time to use it, so... Um... We're still good. And now we're not so good. <laughs> it's funny how much the tide of a fight can turn like this. Um, just from a singular attack like that. That's also why I put the Sage's Surplus on Moira rather than on Russo, because while I could deal more damage with his elemental attacks if I had him using um, Thundaga here, I would much rather have the little bit of extra healing from the plus five intelligence that I get. Because he will spam Wave Cannon eventually, and that just kills us outright, so we don't, we don't want that. I'm going to have Norn use Saber next turn. She's not dealing enough damage from my liking. So, let's see, we got Giant's Gloves, we need a Kiraga, and we need it now on Sid to keep him up and running, and just use Hilaga again. Ooh, only one hit, nice. That's thanks to Norn's massive evasiveness stat, and that was actually a good hit, Sid, nice. We get some fluctuating damage, it looks like, on some of the attacks here, but we should be okay. I am glad that I used that, um... Giant's Tonic on Norn, though, because she really needed the extra HP in order to live through all of this. Sid could probably use some extra HP himself, but uh, yeah, not right now. We, we don't have an extra Giant's Tonic, so I won't bother. Yep. Do your worst there, Omega, because if your worst is an Earthquake, we're fine. Unfortunately, that 300-ish damage that Russo's doing is just about the best that he's going to be able to do in this fight. Um, I mean, every little bit will help, but yeah, that's a little bit better. Um, can I cast Saber? I don't think you can stack Saber, but I guess it's worth a shot. I mean, what's the harm, right? Just reduces my DPS for this turn only, but that's okay. If it means I'll do more damage in the long run, then I'm okay with it. Uh, the additional damage that you get from Saber is higher than the additional damage you get from Temper by, like, four times, I think? So it's it's nice to try, but I'm not 100% sure that you can actually stack it. Um, maybe just toss a High Potion there, Russo. Not to sit, because he's not that bad off on health that he would need a Kiraga. But, uh... Yeah, no indication of the boss's health, unfortunately. Um, I know for a fact that he has 35,000 HP, but uh, 
it doesn't give you any idea how close or far you are. Not in this game, anyway. Um, in later Final Fantasies, you can use Libra to do that, so you can find out about how much HP the boss has left, because when you use Libra, it gives you his HP at its current and then its maximum. So, uh, I'm going to use Kiraka preemptively on Sid in case he uses Wave Cannon again. Okay, well, we're in good shape then. I think I've done about, I'm going to say after this turn, about 10,000 damage to him, so it's a long fight, but uh, we'll get through eventually. We just need to be diligent about our healing, and when Moira starts getting close to that uh, magical 38 MP threshold, which is where she has only one Hilaga left in her, we're going to have to toss out a Mega Elixir to make sure everybody's in full. <laughs> yeah, a little intimidating, but it's, it's nothing we can't handle. Ouch. <laughs> Quit it, Omega. The next boss is a little bit more on the intimidating side, I find, because his attacks can't be mitigated as well as Omega's, because Proterra and Invisera only help against physical attacks, which is what Omega specializes in. His wave cannon's not elemental, but other than that, he mostly attacks with his laser beams, which deal physical damage for some reason, I don't know. Uh, but the next boss uses a lot of AoE attacks, and AoE attacks are very, very bad um, because they deal so much uh, extra damage from enemies that have high, um, higher stats for that sort of stuff. Um, he can cast Flare, he can use Tidal Wave, it's, it's just a bad time. <laughs> but we'll get to that bad time in a few moments here, not quite yet. So about, uh, not the next heal, but the heal after the next heal is going to be when I'm going to want to have, um, probably Russo toss a Mega Elixir out. So that we don't die! Ow! <laughs> I'm going to see how much the Judgment Staff actually does to Omega 2, just to see if I can uh, deal more damage to him that way than I'm dealing currently with Thundaga. Because if I can do that, I can save my MP for when I really need it, which is when I need to heal. So, um, so this is the round I want to toss out that Mega Elixir, I think. And I'm going to toss it and also use Hilaga. Um, it may be overkill, but just in case one of them ha acts before the boss does, I would rather do that. So. Okay, so we'll get away with murder here. Not quite, because if we had thrown the Mega Elixir after Moira used um, Hilaka, we'd be bet, uh, would have been better efficiency-wise, but not quite. Um, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, Judgment Staff. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Here it is. I just keep doing that. So once you get everything all up and running in terms of your defensive buffs here, this boss isn't that terribly bad. Um, it's just a matter of getting to that point that can sometimes be challenging, because if he spams Wave Can in the first few turns, uh, you're basically screwed. So, And it looks like the Judgment Staff does just about as much, if not slightly more, than the um, Thundaga that I was using, so we'll, we'll just keep spamming that so that I can use my um, MP for more efficient things. I mean, I could temper and haste and Saber Russo, but his Sun Sword. I mean, it was good when we got it, and it was good enough for the vanilla game, like for the main game itself, but starting with the bonus dungeons, his Sun Sword starts falling off in terms of its usefulness. And that's unfortunate, because it's a pretty cool weapon. Now that I think about it, though, I think he'll, he might actually be able to do something in terms of offensive presence in the next fight, because the next boss if I recall correctly, is undead. I'm not 100% sure on that, but we can always test when we get into that fight, so... Um, we'll use Kiraga on you, just because you took a big hit last turn. I do prefer fights like this, though, where either all of your party members act before the boss acts, 
or the boss acts before all of your party members act. It makes it easier to micromanage your health that way and your healing because you always know the turn order. Um, and if you always know the turn order, you can plan out your next uh, moves a little more effectively. It's sort of almost like a little mini chess game. Um, but you kind of know what's coming next rather than the randomness of the of the boss's speed being mixed in with yours. So, But the, to be frank, um, Omega and the next boss that we're going to be fighting have so much extra speed that you're pretty much uh, always going to expect them to go first. The only thing, the only class that has any chance of going faster than them is a high-level ninja, which Norn is a ninja, but she's not what the game would consider to be a high level. So, yeah, it's uh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a tug of war game at that point, but we're okay. I'm okay with the way things are. I'm also glad, though, that Norn is, or not Norn, uh, Moira is taking less damage from a lot of Omega's attacks because it means that um, I don't have to worry so much about my healer having issues with health. Uh, that is a good thing about white mages in this game. Uh, they have tons of vitality, so it makes them very survivable. So, what does the game consider a high level? Um, against these bosses, I think you're probably supposed to be about level 70 to fight them on relatively even ground. Um, my character's a level 55, so that's a little bit less than ideal. <laughs> Uh-oh, Sid might be dead. Oh, boy. Oh, close. Close. Way to hang in there, Sid. So you're probably supposed to fight these guys about level 70. Um, I like banging my head against a brick wall, though, so I'm I'm choosing to do it the hard way. Um, I'm gonna cast another Kirag because if he uses wave cannon, we're still in a hurting. Okay, he gave me a freebie. Thank you, Omega. But I I just don't I just don't feel like I need to grind to level 70 to do this whole thing. Um, it's it's the same whole thing with me not exploring all the floors in the grotto there, where I'm like, well, if I'm prepared enough from just doing this stuff to not, like, if I feel like I'm good enough to do this, even if it's a challenge, um, I'll just go for it. I, I don't care. If I have to go back and do other things first, then I'll do that, but I usually just try my hardest to do this first. But... Yeah, probably explains why I like Dark Souls so much, because it's um, a game where you uh, bang your head against a lot of brick walls in an attempt to uh, get through. <laughs> but I, I do, I do appreciate the challenge of going in under level, but it uh, gives me more satisfaction when the boss finally goes down. So, Speaking of which, I think Omega is pretty close at this point. I can't imagine him having more than another 5-ish thousand HP. He might, but uh, we'll get there. Gonna need that Kiraga right now, though. Mm. I'm gonna need it on Russo next turn, too. I might need to use an elixir on Moira in order to keep her uh, MP up there, but we'll, we'll deal with that in a moment. How close is Russo to max HP there? Uh, he's in high potion territory, so I think if I toss out a high potion with him, we should be okay. Ow. Alright, come on, guys. Big hits. Big hits. Okay, that's good. Yes! He's dead! Awesome. That's one super boss down. Nice job, guys. And for defeating Omega, you obtain the Marasame. It is the counterparts to the Mass Immune. In terms of power, it's not quite as good. Um, it gives a ton more evasiveness, though, probably because it's a ninja sword rather than a katana. Now, let me see if it does anything to Norn's stats there. Yep, one to go now. That's all it is. So, 31, 35, 17, 26, 43. Uh, let's see. So, it reduces agility by 5, but it increases um, your strength, I think. Let me see if it does anything to her stamina. 
I don't think so. So it increased strength and intelligence, I believe, by five. And then it decreased her agility. Which is why I don't like it, because if you're decreasing agility on your thief, then you're playing your thief wrong or your ninja wrong, so... That's how that works. So let's go get a better item from the other boss that we can fight here. Uh, let me reset my emulator real quick. Where is that thing? There it is. Okay. So one more to go. And the fight is probably going to be just as long as that one, if not a little longer. But we'll see. Like I said, though, Russo might actually be able to do something in this one because he's got the Sun Sword, which is good against undead enemies. So if this boss is undead, like I, uh, like the guide was saying it was, we might be in good shape. And in case you're wondering, oh, I could probably skirt my way around that pillar to get to that chest. Uh, no, you can't, unfortunately. So you have to beat the boss in order to get the treasure. And uh, it's going to be a hell of a time. I will tell you that right now. I am that which follows Omega. Yes, you are, Shinryu. Yes, you are. So here's a big old dragon. And, um... He's gonna be a bit of a challenge. So we'll do the same thing as last time. We'll give Norn that giant's tonic, and we'll get started with our... <laughs> We'll get started with our Protect and Invis combos here. Shinryu is tough, though, because it, it's hard to do anything other than have your White Mage spam Hialaga the whole time, so... Yeah, he's a pretty friggin' cool-looking dragon there. Um, but it's hard to have your White Mage do anything other than spam Hialaga because he will always act first, and most of his attacks are AoEs. Case in point, what you're going to see right now. So he has Thunderbolt, he has Tsunami, I think he has Blaze and Cyclone as well, which are just powerful attacks. That wasn't too bad, but that's because we have Ribbons, which give us um, widespread uh, damage resistance to all elements. When he starts using stuff like Tsunami or Tidal... Is it Tsunami or Tidal Wave? I don't remember. It's either Tsunami or Tidal Wave, but he can also cast Flare... And Flare is butt-clenching, basically. I'll just, I'll just say that. Um, so we'll do what we did before. We'll have Norn start getting everybody slowly ready to start fighting him. And we'll do the other stuff. Oh, here's Tidal Wave. Oh, <laughs> I do like the animation on that, though. It's pretty funny. But yeah, look at that damage. That's insane. Like, two of those and we're in pretty hot water. <laughs> Hopefully this gets us above 500 HP on everybody, though. Yeah, okay. Basically, we need more heals. Um, so, it, we're not in good shape, but... Okay, who's got the lowest HP? Sid is gonna need a Kiraga here. Um, and I think I'm gonna use the Giant's Gloves to just go start going to town in terms of my offensive potential. Any turn that he gives you an attack that you've seen in the main game, though, like Thunderbolt or Ice Storm, is like the turns that Omega gives you Earthquake. It's a godsend, because it means you can get back up to the healing that you need to be at in order to live through attacks like Flare and Tidal Wave. Um, <laughs> so just just keep doing what you did before. Um, those two stacks of Protected and Viz are probably fine for our purposes there. Um, but I'm probably going to temper and haste Russo as well as Norn in this one. Um, because I can just have Norn throw out the potions if I need to. But if this guy is undead, like I was uh, informed, it'll probably be better for us to keep uh, three of our members able to attack him. So that's what I'm going to do. And I mean, as you can see, his physical attacks are powerful. But with the Protect and Invis that we have, it's nothing we can't handle, I think. I think. I say I say that, but I might be wrong. I might need more evasiveness, so... But that is good damage that we're doing there. Shinryu, thankfully, unlike Omega, has a lot less defense. So this fight might be over quicker than the other one. Um, I'm gonna... Oops, not use Giant's Gloves. I'm gonna use the White Rope again, just so that we can keep ahead of his physical attacks. Here's Tidal Wave again. So we're gonna have to throw out some potions next turn. Ow! That's okay, though. 
I'd rather play defensively and keep myself alive than play offensively and just totally bite it. How many X potions do we have anyway? Um, well, we probably don't need X potions, but I am going to have Norn and the guys toss high potions at themselves for this turn because that will keep them in good shape. I'm not inflicting any damage this turn, but in case of that, we have to be prepared. This might actually kill Russo and Sid, depending on how much damage it does. Ah, oh, killed Sid. Shit. Okay, well, we'll have to deal with that, but uh, we'll get it. We'll get it eventually. And those high potions weren't quite enough. <laughs> I was hoping that he wouldn't do Tidal Wave and Flare together, because those two together are basically a, a death warrant. Um, I need Moira to cast Full Life this turn. So I guess we're using X Potions. <laughs> uh, yeah, Full Life, get it up on Sid. Don't go first, thank you. So this will keep us fairly close to max health. I just need to reapply... Um, protect on Sid and Invis. And I can actually have him use the Defender to do that a little bit better, because the Blink spell that the Defender casts is better than the Invis that I would normally get otherwise. So let's have... Uh, let's play defensive here. We'll have Norn use the White Robe. We'll have uh, Russo cast Protect. Or Protera, that is. We'll have Sid use the Defender. And we'll just have Moira do it. Oh, shit, I cast full life again. My bad. <laughs> At least he took it easy on me this turn. So yeah, that's not going to do anything. But that's okay. Maybe I should have used the Defender in the fight against Omega there. Probably would have helped a little bit more. Okay, so Haste, Temper, Saber... And Hilaga. Actually use Hilaga this time, though, unlike last time. <laughs> and basically, once we get set up, we'll be in good shape to fight him. Um, he shouldn't last as long, it's just a matter of living long enough to start damaging him. So... Um... We can probably have you guys attack. I might regret this. <laughs> oh, okay, we're okay. We're fine, we're just fine. Did some damage, but that's okay. Okay, let's see if the Sun Sword is super effective against him. That's not bad. Considering Russo's attack power isn't nearly as high as these other two, because all he's got is temper and haste on him, that's that's pretty good. Um Yeah, I'm okay with this. We'll just keep doing when he uses something like Tidal Wave, that's when I'm going to get a little worried. But uh, before then, we're okay. Basically, if we end a turn with anything less than 600 HP, that's going to be when I start using Kiraga and Hilaga on the same turn. Um, otherwise, I'm okay with the damage we're dealing. And this turn, we're going to end with less than 600 on somebody. I can tell you that right now. Probably end with less than 600 on multiple people. Maybe I should have brought more Giants Tonics. <laughs> Note to self for next time I play this game. Bring more Giants Tonics. I can always go buy some more. Yeah, we're in, we're in a bit of a pickle there. Uh, hmm. I'm going to need some good itemage here. How about you throw a High Potion there. Yeah, you cast Kiraga there. You do what you're doing and you, you do what you're doing. Okay. At least it wasn't Flare again. If it was Flare again, we would have had two guys dead, and that would have been just unfortunate. So the basic gist of fighting these guys is you have to pick your time to heal, and you have to pick your time to attack. Um, know how much damage their most powerful attacks do, and as long as you have that, you're fine. Um, but if you screw up a little bit, you might be in hot water. And you don't want to be in hot water, because hot water is a bad place to be, as, as you can see here. That's not hot water. That's nuclear explosions, but it's it's pretty close to hot water. <laughs> I mean, look at how much damage that did to Sid. Like, that's insane. And if he does it again, uh, everyone's dead. But, you know, 
not everyone. Moira will live, but uh, her her offensive potential is not. And actually, Norn will live. So the twins will live, but everyone else will not. Um, yeah, we need good item usage again here. So we'll do this and that. Don't use Flare again, please. Ah, shit. Sid's dead again. Yep, dead again. It's intense, yes, it is a, definitely an intense fight. You gotta be very careful, and things will not go your way if you're not careful and you come in under-leveled, but um, otherwise we should be halfway okay. How about we use that Mega Elixir? Um, Sid will end at full life, but Moira can use the MP at this point, so we'll use that Mega Elixir. Uh... Well, the Mega Elixir will get me all that I need out of that, so maybe we'll just have you attack? Because I can't, I can't have you target Sid as long as he's dead, so... Okay, he took it easy on me. Good. So this will heal everyone else to full, and then the full life will heal Sid to full, so we'll be in good shape then. It's a different kind of intensity than Omega's fight. Um, with Omega, it's like, okay, once you, you know, once you get him dead, then he's dead. But with this one, it's like, basically, like, well, with Omega, I won't say that. Once you get all set up, he's dead. It's just a matter of getting him there with his massive physical defense. With Shinryu, he can essentially kill you off at any point in time that he feels like it. And that's just bad all around, so... Hopefully you guys go first before Sid does, because uh, I would rather he not hit for 30 damage this turn. <laughs> okay, that helps. Oh, wait, no, I'm using the Giant's Gloves, never mind. Okay, so, we're either going to die, or... Oh, well, Sid is either going to die, or he's going to be fine. Um, how about that Defender? Does the, no, the Protect Drink only raises defense. Never mind. I was going to say, that might help me in this case, but no. Not quite. Okay, he took it easy on me. Good, good. Let's just keep this up, and we'll be okay. I will eventually need to get um, Protect and Invis reapplied on Sid there, but we'll, we'll do that at some point. Not right now. Right now I need to... Well, there's Invis, basically, but... Uh, right now I need to get everybody healed. Uh, how about we actually do that this turn? We'll do, um, where is it? the White Robe and Rotera this turn, since we're all fairly close at this point to full. I say that, and then this happens, well... <laughs> Ow. His physical attacks aren't that threatening, but I, I mean, I would like to keep Sid from getting blasted by one all of a sudden, so... But yeah, this is the challenge that I live for, basically. These are the these are the boss battles that make things all worthwhile. Um, because if I can overcome this, then uh, it's much it's much better than uh, overcoming obstacles that are otherwise fairly easy to deal with. So, well, Sid's dead again, and actually Norn and Russo might also be dead, so we might have to reset here. But we'll see. Ow. This ain't good. This ain't good at all. Because I don't have that Mega Elixir anymore, so that's going to make things a little more tricky. Norn is dead next turn if I don't... Well, I don't have an X Potion for it. I could use an Elixir, though. It's what these Elixirs are here for, so maybe I might as well just do that, and then we'll have Moira cast full life to get Sid back up. At this point, nothing is in the too good to use club in terms of my items. If I've got it, I'm using it, damn it. <laughs> okay, so. Um, 
I gotta start contributing to offense here eventually, though, because otherwise this isn't gonna work out too well. So maybe we'll do this and that. I guess I could just cast regular old protect. Proterra just does it on the whole party, so I guess I could just cast regular old protect. Um, he doesn't need the defender so much as he needs the giant's gloves for damage, so we'll do that. Uh, oh, no, wait, that's that's right, I was gonna have him use this. There we go. While uh, Norn contributes to offense. No, don't do that. Okay, there we go. Ow. He's really going after Moira there. He, know, he knows, Shinryu knows what uh, the weakest Link needs to be in order for him to win in this boss fight. But... I just can't let him get there, that's all. Um, temper... Saber... And Hilaka again. See, that's why I had Sid have him protect and invis on him, because otherwise we would have eaten a lot of damage right there. Okay, let's see where we are this next turn here. Everyone except Sid should be at full. Yeah. So, we'll have two offensive potential people this time. We'll cast Kiraga on Sid, and then we'll just keep casting Hilaga like we were. Nice! He actually missed an attack! We've stacked Invis to the point where uh, Roos, or Norn has so much evasiveness that he can't even hit her anymore. So that's kind of funny, but... Okay, so we're good. We're good. All three of you, go all out! We'll keep you in good shape, hopefully. Now... Come on, guys! One big round! Let's do it! We did good damage that round. That's that's good. That's good. We will need this though. We're back to we're back to this whole mess that happens here, where he uh, spams flare and everything. I, I I wonder if defend makes me take less damage from flare. Hmm. Yeah, it's okay. Goodbye, Sid. <laughs> This is a bad spot! <laughs> okay, so we used all of our elixirs now as well, and we don't have good healing items in our inventory, so we'll just do high potions. Oh, wait, no, don't do that. I don't need you to use the ribbon as an item, it doesn't do anything. And then, full life. Thankfully, he doesn't seem to be using Tidal Wave and then Flare and then another high-damaging attack on me, because otherwise we'd be in bad shape. <laughs> I will keep myself alive, though, Shinryu. You can't uh, beat me down that easily. He also has 35,000 max HP, just like Omega, so um, he's, he's tricky, but... We'll get him eventually, basically. Uh, I'm gonna use Saber. And then, oh, no, don't do that. There we go. As long as he keeps attacking Norn instead of, say, Sid, I'm okay with his physicals, so. This should put everybody back to full. Yep. Okay. So let's start buffing up Sid again. Um, since he keeps dying, I think I'm just gonna start um, just buffing him with offensive stuff because it'll keep his DPS up and it makes it so that I take I do less offensive or defensive stuff. I want to keep the fight moving basically. So if I do this, I should be in better shape. Should is the key word, but we'll we'll see. Ow. All right, get a big hit in there, Sid. He'll deal his max damage now, so... All right! We got him! Nice! <laughs> it was shorter than... It would have been shorter, I should say, than Omega, because he has less defense, but his offensive potential is so much more ridiculous than Omega 
that you just have to be very careful when you're fighting Shinryu there. But he's dead, so that's all that matters. All right. And for defeating him, we obtain the Ragnarok Sword, which is another weapon that can cast Flare when used as an item. So now if we need Russo and Moira to do damage to the enemies, and there's a lot of them, I'm just going to be stacking Flare on them, basically. <laughs> okay. We made it. Extremely intense, yes. Very intense. I like that fight at low levels. When you get to places like level 70, you're... If you have a monk or a master in your party, they have so much strength and physical attack at that point that it, it almost trivializes the fight, because if I got to the level that I'm supposed to be at for that fight, Sid would have been dealing about 4,000 damage instead of 2,800 when he was maxed out. And that just makes things... I mean, you, I mean, you divide 35,000 by 4,000. If I hit him with Sid nine times, he's dead. So... I prefer to do that fight at lower levels. It just makes things more interesting, I think. But man, <laughs> we we need a little bit of patching up after that one, I think. Uh, I, I don't even care that I'm casting heal log and I don't need that much HP. We're gonna be out of here after this, so it's fine. Um, we don't need to restore our MP though, because uh, once we're out of here, we won't really need to fight that many um, monsters in order to uh, get to a place where we can heal ourselves, so that's cool. Um, so yeah, as you can see down here, here's another sword that I'm going to be keeping in our inventory. I think it casts Flare as an item. It doesn't say that it casts Flare as an item, but I'm pretty sure it does. We can always test in a moment when we get out onto the world map again. But if you were wondering why I decided to fight Shinryu second, it's because of the contents of this chest. In this chest we get the Hero's Shield, the most powerful shield in the bonus content. It is, I believe, Knight and Ninja exclusive, and it's basically a ribbon that goes in your shield slot. Um, ribbons prevent all status ailments and give you extra protection against elements. The Hero Shield does that, but also goes in your shield slot. So I can have ribbons and the Hero Shield on Norn, and now she probably takes about as much damage from elemental attacks as Moira does. And Moira is the white mage with tons of vitality and magic defense. So that's pretty fantastic for Norn. Now the Genji Gloves are definitely a justified equip because she has two other forms of instant death protection as well. It's too bad that we don't have anything for Russo's shield slot yet, but we'll get something for him eventually. Um, I would also like to acquire something for Norn's armor slot and uh, Sid's armor slot, but those are those are things that I may or may not get, and if I don't get them, that's cool. All of those things lie in the final bonus dungeon, though, Whisperwind Cove, and that is where we need to go next, but that is not going to be something we're going to do today. Today I've had enough of bonus content, so we're going to head out while we still have our asses attached to our bodies there. Let's head out. We'll end up in our ship, and we can go to Melmond for healing, and then we can sail over to Crescent Lake in order to get to Whisperwind Cove, and then I'll call it a day. Okay, this gives me a good opportunity to test and see if the Ragnarok casts Flare when used as an item, so let's give it a shot. Well, it has a target all on there, so let's give it a try. Yes! Go! <laughs> okay, so we have two items now that can cast Flare, and because of that, our items that, um, well, actually, I think the Inn at Crescent Lake costs just as much as the one at Melmond, so let's let's go to Mel uh, Crescent Lake instead, because that's right near where Whisperwind Cove is. I just need to take the river path from um, Crescent Lake into the mountains, and then... I'll be there eventually. It'll only take about 5-10 minutes and we'll be there. Well, these th these Ara items were nice while they lasted, but uh, the only one that we don't have uh, anything for yet is uh, an upgrade for the healing staff, but that will, uh, that will be something that we get later on anyway, uh, in the Whisperwind Cove there. Might as well use our Ara items one last time, though. Because after this, I'm going to be just throwing nukes at my enemies instead, because it's just more damage efficient. Alright, so here's the airship, so I'm going to be lazy and hop in the airship that I left here when I took my ship here, and go 500 feet this way to Crescent Lake so I can rest and buy items and sell off the excess gear that I've got.
I should mention, by the way, Panda, while we're in the last throws of the stream here, I have a um, special distinction with the way that I do my streams on this um, on this channel here. What I do is that I pick a game that I want to play at the time. Um, in this case, it's Final Fantasy One because of the 30th anniversary, and then. I alternate between playing a game that I would like to play and a game that my viewers have suggested for me to play. And I keep a Google document that has a list of all the games that have been suggested to me. So if you would like to suggest a game that you'd like to see me stream, and I'll play anything. It can be old, new, um, you know, on PC, on console, um, anything you'd like to see me play, um, just give me a recommendation because it opens up um, new doors for me for games that I haven't played yet. Um, so if you have a suggestion that you'd like to see me stream, um, feel free to let me know, and I will add it to the list. And basically, once I'm done with this game, I'll look at my list and I'll say, oh, that looks interesting. And then I'll choose one, the whatever one I think looks interesting at the time, and I'll play that one. So if you have any suggestions, please feel free to let me know. I will, uh, I listen to any and all of them, so. Get back up to 90, so. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, any console you'd like. Um, I don't currently own an Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Um, and those are really the only consoles that I'm concerned with, because if it's consoles older than that, I can more than likely um, play it on an emulator of some kind. Uh, I might need a more powerful PC, but I can do that later at some point. So, yeah, any console you'd like, man, just you just let me know. It can be anything from original NES, or even Atari, if you'd like, although I don't know if that's going to be that entertaining, um, to something completely new, something that just came out. Um, and if it's something new that just came out, I'll probably play it faster than I would otherwise get to it, to be honest with you. So, uh, yeah, whatever you'd like, man, any console you'd like. Um, we've got all the items that we need there. My dog is barking. We can sell these spider silks, since I don't need them. We can sell this white fang. We can sell this blue fang. Uh, I might need that light curtain, so I'm going to hold on to that. We don't need the red or the blue curtains, though. Hold on a second. What's up, Yig? What you marking? Are you okay? You're all right. Did you get your food yet? I think Steve brought your food out. We'll bring you in in a little bit, okay? You just you just hang out for a little while longer. We'll bring you inside for a little while, okay? Okay, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Okay. That's our other dog, our long-haired German Shepherd. We bring him in in the winter. In the summer, he's an outside dog. Okay, where was I? I have these Hermes shoes. I should really be casting haste with those, but, uh, yeah. Um, do I need these fairy tonics? I don't think so. I don't think there's ever... Well, I don't have that Mega Elixir anymore, so maybe I should keep them so that I can have the MP, because, well... No, because I guess if I need the MP, I do have dry ethers in my inventory there, so I guess that's fine. I'll sell the fairy tonics. If I need them, then I'll I'll figure it out eventually. Um, keep those. Keep. I'll keep my level two uh, things just in case, because the Judgment Staff and Ragnarok have animations that take a long time. So if I'm feeling impatient, we'll use the level two items if I don't need to use anything else. But I can sell that ruby armlet, uh, the flame shield. Genji shield and this protect ring. And we're good. So now it's just a matter of getting to Whisper in Cove and then we'll call it a day. Um okay, so where is Whisper Wind Cove again? I gotta look at the map here real quick. It is right here. So I could probably land my airship over here by the ice cave and then just take the river around to that, so I think that's what I'll go do. And that's Mount Gog, that's not what I'm looking for. Here we go. So we'll just land the airship right here. And I'll take this. Yes, yes I have played Bloodborne. It's um it's probably um overall my favorite in the Soulsborne series out of all of them. Um 
and I've beaten it a couple of times. I, I would like to play it for the um, stream at some point, and it's going to happen eventually. Um, but if you would like that to be your suggestion, um, I'll probably play it faster than I would otherwise play it there. Um, I'm going to go through the entire Souls series, starting with Demon Souls, on my next... My choice for the playthroughs, it, the next one that I do is going to be Demon Souls because the servers are no longer going to be active starting at the end of February. So I'm going to do that one next, but if you put Bloodborne on the list, I might play it quicker than I otherwise would, if, if you want to see it quicker. Otherwise, um, it'll probably I'll probably do it within like the next year or two. Actually, I don't even think it'll be two years, it'll probably be like a year at the most. So anyway, this is Whisperwind Cove. It is the last of the bonus dungeons. And this guy we couldn't talk to before because we couldn't understand Lufinian, but now we can. Oh, well, good. Glad that uh, my dealing with the four fiends had outreaching effects other than just killing them. It's possible. But the Whisperwind Cove appears to be an ancient civilization of the Lufinians. And it is a long, long dungeon. We probably won't get the entire thing done on the next one because it's 40 floors! Life Spring Grotto was 20, so... Gotcha. Uh, yeah, just like it, like you said, give it a think. Uh, let me know next time, or whenever you feel like you have a good idea for a game that you'd like to see me play, just let me know whenever you're comfortable. Um, I will, like I said, be getting through the entire Souls series eventually, so... Anyway, this is where we're going to end it off for today. Yeah, yeah, uh, Bloodborne... I think Bloodborne's more offensive nature um, clicked with some people a little bit more than the rest of the Soul series, to be honest with you. Um, it's... Uh, let's see, how do I want to word it? It, it, it discourages you from being more slow-paced, which I think the Soul series can, kind of encourages you to do. And it, it encourages you to think more with on your feet, with dodges rather than shield blocks and that sort of thing. And it'll be a fun game once I get to it, but for now, this is where we have to call it a day. So, this is where I will end the stream for today. Thank you to everybody for watching. I appreciate you coming out to the chat and coming out to see this on YouTube. I will see, I will see all of you next time when we get started on Whisperwind Cove. We'll probably do like the first 30 floors, I would think. I think we'll be able to get that much done in, in one stream. Well, we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. I will see you um, tomorrow is the next stream. So I'll see you all tomorrow. Oh, yes, and I should mention, since Panda mentioned it here, if you would like, feel free to join me in about an hour after this goes, after this stream goes offline um, on Pem's stream, Pem Elysian or Pem TLC on Twitch. He's going to be streaming Morrowind, and he's going to be streaming... Another game that I'm not sure if we know of yet, because I don't think he has directly told us yet, but he is taking into account some suggestions that we made for him last week, so we'll see what that is when I go over there. Uh, for now, though, I am going to go get some food, because I'm kind of hungry, to be honest with you, before I go and hang out over there. But I'll be there, so if you'd like to be there too, feel free to join me. But if this is the last time I see you today, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.